Good morning. Good morning. Good morning, morning. It's 10 o'clock and we had a date. It's time for Midweek Motivation Live with Patrick Lee. I hope y'all are doing well today. Giving people just a second to get on the channel here. People already starting to tune in for the show. We're going to be talking about the journey of life today on mastery. Some tips for moving towards mastery in your life. Good to see people already tuning in. Let's get all of the other technology silenced and uh, distractions out of the way. And we are ready to go. I want to talk to you today a little bit about mastery and what that means and uh, the journey towards that. And uh, it's been a, a, a fun, fun journey for me. Um, by no means do I call myself a master. Um, people have funny, funny uh, thoughts about the word master, but it's not about being the master. It's, it's, it's about mastery and it's about mastering the thing in life that you have chosen as your goal. Hey, Pete, good to see you watching already as well, Cody. Just trying to keep my head above water, much less mastering. Ah, that's all good though. But that's that's part of the part of the show today, part of the journey, um, and and that's what I want to get into. I actually had a uh, had my good friend Ty Garrett on the show recently. Uh, go back to YouTube and uh, on here on LinkedIn or Facebook and watch the show. Um, a couple of weeks ago, we had Ty Garrett from Extreme Martial Arts on there. And growing up, when my daughter was a student. There we called him Master Ty, and he uh, he asked me when we were here. He said, "Could you please not call me Master Ty? I just you know I I don't you know they call me teacher, coach, professor, you know just not Master. Um, and mastery actually is a word that a lot of people use rather flippantly. Um, they say you know I'm the master of this, master of that. You then you hear the the old term, the jack of all trades. Um, a master of none, but is still far better than a master of none, which is the second half of that saying that many people always leave out when they're trying to put a slur on someone who is good at a lot of things, but hasn't really mastered one. So that person that is out there doing the struggling and the work and the learning is actually far better than the person that doesn't attempt anything at all, correct? That's kind of where we're going with this today. Not a long show, but something that's been on my mind as I've been on this journey as well. You know, when I was speaking with Ty, he said, you know, don't use the term master. There is a level in martial arts that is far over a ninth degree black belt um, before you ever can ad even attempt to move towards the title of master. And there you we've all heard the movies, right? The Kung Fu master, the Shaolin master. Uh, masters of Tai Chi, all of these different things. But then in the business world, the corporate world, we start talking about what is mastery. And that's been defined as over 10,000 hours of training and learning and experience on a specific topic. That is the, the defined amount of time that most business people will tell you and industry experts will tell you it takes to become the master um, of any topic. Um, 10,000 hours. And in my journey in, in real estate and in the previous businesses I've had before, I've had the ability, and the, the, uh, the benefit of going to many teachings, trainings, um, masterminds. And a lot of people use that term for a meeting where a lot of people to get together to throw out ideas and grow business grow themselves, grow the group. You have a mastermind, um, but you're on this journey towards something called mastery and it's somewhat elusive. And in, in that journey, you have so many different types of personalities, so many types of, of um, people that either have or have not, or have varying dis, uh, varying abilities um, at learning, varying types of learning and varying styles of learning. Some of them, and let's let's use this analogy 
Um, and I had a different one. I was, I was actually had in my notes, but on the way into the studio here, uh, in the, in the downtown tower studio one midweek motivation life now on all major podcast platforms. Um, <laughs> I have to throw that out. This other analogy came to mind and I watch a lot of off grid videos. Maybe you do too. Um, maybe you don't, but I've watched a lot of homesteading. It's how I, um, get into a, a de-stressing mode. Um, life can get pretty hard during the days. A lot of decisions are made and we thrive on that. It's all good. But if you want to um, unwind a little bit, some people turn to numerous things. They'll hit the gym. Um, obviously, that's not what I have chosen, but I do I do work out. Just make a little joke there. I'm in pretty good shape for a guy my age. Uh, and, uh, I do hit the gym, but a lot of people turn to other things to de-stress. And I watch a lot of off-grid videos, homesteading shows, and, uh, people out there trying to make it on their own with the sweat of their brow, the power of their own two hands, uh, them and their wife, their girlfriends, their families. And, uh, they're constantly right now we're in the birthing season for a lot of young animals, goats, sheep, pigs, cows, and you'll, you'll, probably understand this analogy if you've ever had a litter of kittens, um, a litter of dogs, a litter of pigs growing up. There's always the one baby that is in there in front of everyone else, pushing people out of the way, pushing their, their you know, other pigs or cats or whatever it is out of the way to get to the nourishment that comes from the mother. And then as they get a little older, they do the same thing and they just they go in there and they gulp down all of the food, all of the milk, all of the nourishment, and they push the others out of the way. They can, they want it all as fast and as hard and as, as much as they can consume, they do. And then you have the others that are the intermediates and they go in there and they get some, they get their share maybe, but they don't consume as much and they grow and they, you know, they do well. Um, but then you've got some that are the runt of the litter, right? You've got other pigs or kittens or cows or, or dogs. And that puppy may get pushed out of the way more often. That little lamb, that lamb gets pushed out of the way sometimes and doesn't get the nourishment it needs. And it, it may grow, but it may not grow as big and as tall and as strong as its other siblings because it didn't get the nourishment and it wasn't able to consume. Some of them, they try to go in there and they get the food or the nourishment or the milk and they just can't consume it. They start to choke on it. It's too much, too fast. I've seen that in real estate time and time again. And maybe you have in your industry, you bring people in and they're gung-ho, they're very ambitious and they want to learn it all. And they, you start feeding them like out of a fire hose, which is way too much pressure. And you give them all the information out front and you blow them out of the water. They can't consume it fast enough. It overwhelms their mind and they quit. And that's not something I wish for you people. I want all of you to learn how to go in and get the information that you need to be successful in life, to grow fast and strong, to be able to be successful. So I've noticed that in that analogy that people are very much the same way. We come into an industry, we want to go for a goal, we select a career, and there are many of you that can jump into that career. Your mind is right. Your motivations and your ambition are on point. You come in and you say, give me the information. Give it to me. Give it to me. Give it to me. Bring it on. And that person, you become a student of your craft. You want to learn your craft to the best of your ability. You study, you go to conventions, you get a mentor, you read the books, you do the, you listen to the podcast, you do the work. When I buy some, some of the books that I buy come with a workbook. Those things are very handy. Uh, Tim Story, Hollywood Bible study guy is also travels with coach Michael Burt and a lot of other motivational speakers. Um, he wrote a book years ago called uh, When You're Going Through a Setback. It's time for your comeback when you've gone through a setback. And I bought the book and I also bought the workbook. Many books, um, the, uh, man, the latest one, I'm trying to remember the name of the one I just did. I may, I think I have the workbook here. I got one, uh, Coach Michael Burt, 
and it came with a workbook. I got the one by the uh, Navy SEALs. Also came with a workbook. I'm looking through my I'm looking through my stacks right here on on my shelf right next to my table. Can't find it, but that's okay. Uh, the Navy SEALs came out with a great book. Some of you may know, remember the title. It's just left me, Jocko Willink, and another guy that wrote that book. And uh, wow, <laughs> how does that name leave me? That's crazy. But I get the, the, the anyway. I get the workbook to go with the book because it's a study guide. It's your field manual for you to learn how to get uh, more information out of that book. So, so you do that. Um, and then there are some of you that get into the industry and you say, I want to learn everything. And we start to teach you and feed you. And you start trying to drink out of that fire hose. And we realize that we're choking you and that you cannot consume that much information that fast. And you have to slow down a little. And we have to feed you in ways that you can absorb or you can consume in the amounts that are palatable to you and you don't choke on it. And we have many people that get into the real estate industry and, and they want they burn out really fast. They get as much information as they can and then they don't pace themselves and they realize this is really hard work and they quit. And maybe in your industry, you've experienced some of the same things with people. You bring them in and they have the motivation, the ambition, and they want to learn. And then they realize once they get into it, how much work it is, what it's going to take for them to ever um, become a master of that craft. And they feel like, it's not worth it. But many times they feel like they're not, it's not worth it because they're inundated with too much information, too much um, knowledge at the wrong time. And you have to start to slow down a little bit with those people and help them learn to enjoy the journey and realize that where you are in life is a stepping stone to where you want to be. So many different analogies we could use for that, and we use them on the show all the time. But yes, Nicole Wells says extreme ownership. That's it. Because if it's to be, it's up to me. That's the one. And great book. And those guys go into great detail of the missions that they were on as Navy SEALs and how that SEAL team works together um, to get everyone's back, uh, make sure that they're covered, they take care of their fellow soldier. And everyone understands what extreme ownership means. I am 100% responsible for everything I can control and what I can't control. And I'm going to own that. And I'm going to be responsible for that. And when you adapt that mindset, you have a much better chance at moving forward towards mastery of whatever the, the, the career is that you have chosen. Thank you for that, Nicole. Um, but it, yes, if you get if you buy the extreme ownership book, I highly recommend you buy the field guide or the the workbook that comes along with that. If you get a book and it doesn't come with one, turn that book into a field guide yourself. Many of you do this. I know from a lot of my readers, friends, um, we we say this a lot. Readers are leaders, and note takers are world changers, and I totally believe that. But most of the time you read a book and you just read through it, you may dog ear a couple of pages. But those of you that don't have a workbook that comes with the book, you turn that book into a workbook and every page is highlighted. Anything that stands out to you is underlined, exclamation marks are added, brackets are put around it. You put notes in the margins or under the page because you want to be able to refer back to that readily because that's good information that you're putting into your brain, right? We talk about all of the gates into your spirit, your inner man and your eyes and your ears, very important. And the things that you speak out of your mouth that go back into your own ears, very important into getting that into your spirit. So reading is one of the, one of the really good ways to work towards mastery, but how do you really effectively work on achieving 10,000 hours on a topic. Ed Milet talks about compound pounding. I've shared that before. And then if you have an opportunity to get his latest book, The Power of One, The Power of One More by Ed Milet, he goes into that as well. Um, the, the art of compound 
pounding. So you start chipping away at a granite statue, right? And granite comes off in very, very, very small chunks. So when granite, marble, these big statues have been carved by these remarkable artists ages ago, very small pieces come off at a time. But as you continue to chip away, to pound away, you start creating or exposing the art piece that is inside. But if you try to do it very quickly and take big chunks of granite off, every time you'll end up knocking off a bigger chunk and removing part of that piece of stone that you were trying to leave behind and it ruins the art piece and you have to start over. So you have to learn the art of com excuse me, compound pounding to where you do the right pounding in the right amounts, but you continue to do that. You don't quit. It comes down to that power of one more rep. If you're working out, instead of doing 10 reps, do 11 or do 12. Instead of doing 10 sets of three, do 11 sets of three, whatever that is. So as you start thinking about this mastery journey, how am I ever going to achieve 10,000 hours? You have to realize that in the beginning, you're an amateur, you're an infant, you're a baby, you're the little bird, whatever it is. And you have to start learning how to grow in the amounts and ways that you can grow at that time until you make it to this next stage to where you start becoming um, mechanical or the things that you're doing become natural. So you, some people are called born naturals. And, and I don't know that I agree with that. Some people have giftings. I don't know that they're always a natural at everything, but some people are more adept. They're more skilled. They're more agile at a younger age. But you start, you start doing the process until it becomes fairly regular and you can do it on a regular basis. And that's when you know that you have start, you have practiced enough to become sufficient to do a job. When you start a job and you work with the trainer, you all know how to train people, right? You're the beginner. You put them with a person and that person does the work and you watch. And then that person shows you how to do it. And then you do it together and then you do it and they watch you. And then eventually you can do it on your own, right? That's how training works, basic. And for the beginner, that's how it works. But eventually you get to the point to where you've been trained enough to where you can pretty much do it on your own. That's a mechanical ability or now you can naturally just go about and do that. Are you anywhere near mastery? Heck no, nowhere near mastery. But you know enough about the job that you can do it fairly regularly. You've eaten enough you've drank enough, you've learned enough, and now you can move forward and do it. It's like stage fright when you're a singer. In the beginning, you're terrified to go out on stage. After you've sang on stage, after a while, you've performed on stage. It's not that hard. You know enough about what you're doing to get over the fear of doing it, but you're nowhere near the excitement level you will be when you have mastered it. And we say it this way a lot in, in practice, whether it's just in sports or in business or testing, a lot of people have a hard time testing. They study, 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 and do all of their real estate classes. When it comes down to taking the test, they fail repeatedly because they're not a good tester. Or the fear of the test causes their brain to have brain fog and they can't remember the answers. So we teach people, don't practice until you get it right. You need to practice until you can't get it wrong. And that's when you know you're on the road towards mastery. Many things that an artist does, my daughter that works for me, Erica, many of you know, is an artist and an author, and she is constantly working on her craft. She does marketing for me, does a lot of our online stuff and creates our ads and a lot of our motivational posts and is very good at that, but is also an artist and draws with electronics and a lot of gadgets and gizmos that she has. And she's constantly working on her craft. And it may be that she's 50 or 60 years old, but she may at that age become a master artist. You never know, right? Exactly, Nicole. Practice until you can't get it wrong. It's good. I tell all of my agents the same thing. And when I studied to take my real estate test, um, I was working online, doing my courses online at night. And after I took all of my classes and passed my classes, I took an additional course 
called the Crash Course in Real Estate Testing. And I practiced and practiced and practiced and tested and tested and tested until I couldn't fail. And when I passed it long enough that I could not fail, I scheduled my exam. And I nearly aced the test on the first try. And I tell people that a lot. If you have a hard time testing, work some more, compound pounding, practice some more, get with a friend, go over the answers, practice some more, learn some more, compound pounding. Then you know you're on the road towards mastery. And if it's too much for you and you can't do it, it's not your time. Go back and learn some more. Go back and practice some more. Work on your area some more. Learn some more. Take another course. Read another book. But whatever you do, don't quit. Because if you quit, you win. How many of people have you, how many, how, blah, 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 blah. Haven't had enough coffee today, it seems. Or maybe I've had too much already. I'm not sure. But how many of you know people that are now bosses in their company simply because they never quit. So many good people quit before they achieve the, the level in the company that they want to achieve. They get offended and they leave. They think it's too hard or they can't learn fast enough. So they, they quit. But then there's the other guy and there's the other girl and they just don't quit. They stick around. They take their lumps. Maybe they get corrected a few times. Maybe they get told you'll never be a boss. Um, and then that person that said you would never be a boss gets fired. Something goes wrong. They get caught cheating. They get terminated or eventually they quit and you keep trucking along and you don't quit and you keep a good attitude and you read another book and you learn from someone else who does it a little better and then you get better and you don't quit. And then the next boss quits. And you know what? They come and ask you if you'd like a promotion, maybe to be a shift leader or maybe you can train some of these new people that are coming in and you train. Sometimes you feel like you're training your replacement and that person can't handle it and they burn out and they quit. And you know what? Eventually you're the boss. You've been there longer. You've got seniority. Nothing can go come up that you don't know how to do. And you're the right fit because you mastered your position because you didn't quit. So what is mastery? 10,000 hours. Can anyone watching the show today achieve it? Sure you can, if you're willing to put in the work. But where do you start at the beginning? Start where you are. Today is a great day to make the decision to start working on mastering your craft moving forward. Realize that everyone can't go with you. They just can't. Everyone is not going to go on your journey with you. I hope that your spouse can go on the journey with you, um, that your besties and the resties can go on the journey with you. But you will find that a lot of people burn out. A lot of people can't run as fast as you. Um, there will be a couple that run faster than you. And I, I look at that in my real estate business and I, um, I don't compare myself to others because I have found that when you compare yourself to others, you are comparing your insides to their outside appearance and appearances are always fooling you. I don't believe anything that I hear most of the time and very seldom do I believe half of what I see because everything that we see on social media and on the news is contrived. It's all put out to make you look very successful and to put to show you in your best light. So I don't compare myself to others, but I do look at numbers and I do look at where many of my um, people in the industry, great friends of mine, where they are going and the steps that they are taking towards mastery. And I balance what I'm seeing against what I know that I have the ability and the speed to do um, with leading a team and leading a life worth living as well, which is always part of the journey. Everything that you want to do, of course, you have to balance that and get it in check with the life style that you want to live with those that you love and trust that are in your immediate sphere, right? So you can say, I'm going to do this, I'm going to do that. And if your partner's not in agreement, how many of you know that's like dragging a, a lead weight around your foot? 
It's just not going to happen. But when both of you are in agreement and that business or that idea could be the lead weight, when you and your spouse are both in agreement, you pick up the lead weight and you run together. And that's when you start heading towards mastery. You know you can be successful when you're both in agreement. But learning where you're at, identifying where you're at, and putting together a plan uh, or a strategy to move forward is definitely going to help you on the road towards mastery. Practice, practice, practice. Do it more and more and more. Don't practice until you get it right. Practice until you can't get it wrong. And then the last step I would probably need to throw out here before we we shut this train down today is learn to start teaching other people because one of the final steps or one of the one of the steps that can move you ahead quantum leaps in in your journey is teaching others how to do what you do if you want to learn how to do something learn how to do it read the book go to the seminars get a mentor learn how to do it. But once you have done that and it becomes mechanical, then learn the, how to get into the next step. And that is teaching. And if you can teach someone else how to do what you do, you will realize that you learn along the way as you teach them too. Many things can be gleaned from the student by you as you're teaching that student. Their experiences in life can help you. And when you start talking things out, sometimes you learn better processes. But as you're becoming the teacher, you become more driven to learn more about the topic that you're teaching. So you always know more than the student. And sometimes that secret art is simply learning one concept more than your student knows. So you constantly stay forward, uh, stay ahead of the student as you teach and you learn together as you go down the road. So really mastery, that was the question today. Are we going after mastery? Or are we going after forward motion? That choice is up to you today, my friends. And that's what we call Midweek Motivation Live. Motivating you to success in every area of your life. Thank you, everyone, for watching the show today. This is where we're going we're gonna to shut this one down. I appreciate each and every one of you coming to watch the show. Nicole, Ross, Pete, Cody, Diane, thank you for watching. I appreciate that. Make it, make it a goal this today to move forward, forward motion. I'm going to buy another book. I just bought six books on Amazon the other day that are going to be in my, they're already in my Audible playlist. I, I looked, I happened to look at my, my credits and I had like 14 credits unused. And I'm like, why do I have unused credits <laughs> in my Audible account? I'm buying books, baby. I went in and just started going down my hit list. Absolutely. Going down my going down my hit list of books that I've I've been wanting to read. Every time I'm watching a seminar or a you know a podcast and people start giving you notes about a good book, it always goes on my book list book list. So I just hit my book list and I went in and bought a bunch of books and I'm gonna be consuming all of them and I'll be bringing some great content to you guys as well. Ben says start from the start, move up, and they start wanting to work in other locations. That's right. Thank you. Thank you, Gina. Everyone else watching the show, I appreciate you guys. I've done that. Diane says, Wild at Heart. I actually own the book. It's on my nightstand by my bed. That's an incredible book that will change your life. That's a good one. Um, and uh, there's also a, a female version of that, the Wild at Heart Woman, that you might pick that one up and read as well. Good stuff, guys. Until we meet again, remember, comfort begins at the end of your comfort zone. So get out there and get un <laughs> courage. Courage begins at the end of your comfort zone. Go out there today and be courageous. Get uncomfortable and uh, take care of yourselves. Until I see you again, I love you. This has been Patrick Lee, Midweek Motivation Live. Bye-bye.